Welcome rock enthusiasts to another exciting adventure in lapidary artistry. Today we're delving into the captivating world of fire agate cabochon crafting. Join me as we journey through the process of transforming a raw slab of fire agate into a dazzling gemstone masterpiece. I'll be working on a piece of fire agate that I recently cut on a recent rock counting adventure that I did near Saddle Mountain, Arizona. Boy, that sure was a fun adventure. If you'd like to watch that, I'll put a link in the description below so you can check that out. But for this video, we're going to be focusing on making that fire agate shine. With that out of the way, let's go over the basics of safety. I've got here my safety goggles. I've also got here a pair of gloves to protect my hands. Make sure you've got plenty of adequate ventilation. You don't want to be breathing in any of that rock dust. So this here is going to be the fire agate that we're going to be working on today. I've already cut this on the tile saw and I've kind of shaped it using the tile saw. We're going to refine those edges just a little bit better before we get started on this. Let me show you how we do that. So as you can tell, the shape of this is very crude, far from perfect. We'll address that in just a moment. Uh, the first thing we need to decide is which side are we going to have our cabochon domed out at. This side looks pretty interesting. And this side, well, not so interesting in my opinion. So I think this is going to be our bottom right here. And I hope this pattern decides to go through just a little bit, because I really do like that. That does look nice. All right. So we'll just set that there. And the next thing we're going to do is I've got here this Sharpie marker. I'll just set that there for now. And I've got this here stencil template. And we're going to find out what size I can use that's going to give me the most out of what I've got to work with here. So we can take this. Line it up with 18, kind of angle it that way. Hmm. I think we might actually be able to upgrade to 19 here. Oh yeah, the bigger the better. So I've got that lined up really well. I'm going to take my hair sharpie, any type of writing tool. Oh, make sure you got this pressed down well because if it starts to slide around, things can get a little bit wild. Just trace. A nice outline. There's something a pitting in that rock. Oh boy, but luckily we should be able to knock that out. Doesn't look too deep. At least not from this angle. And there we go. So we got our nice oval shape. We're going to knock out all of this material here. This is the big time consuming part of getting rid of that. For this step, I'm going to be going by hand. If you wanted to though, you can attach a dopping stick to this agate. It's entirely optional. However, I find it to be a little bit cumbersome when I'm shaping the rock because a lot of times that dowel will hit the barrier and it gets a little bit awkward. So I like to leave that out, but that's entirely up to you. So with our safety goggles, we got a reservoir full of water. We got a drip pan completely empty. We are ready to go now. Oh, make sure we got our Cabochon taking off right here. Let's get our water coming out a little bit. Mine always likes to be stubborn because I got that good old Arizona hard water that just forms calcium everywhere. Look at that, I've got it on almost open full throttle and stuff's barely coming out. There we go. Beautiful. All right, let's fire this up. We got our agate right here, and again, we're just going to be going around and knocking off the majority of this meat. It doesn't have to be too perfect because we're going to be refining this as we go, but for the most part, we're going to get most of this shaved off. And this step is always the loudest. Just kind of let it gently rock around as it goes. You don't have to apply too much pressure to it. The diamonds will do all the work for you.
as you can see, I'm just getting close enough to the black lines, but I'm not going too crazy with them. So I'm going to start working on this side now. As you can see, it's not perfect, but we definitely got the shape that we're looking for for now. Yeah, that's looking pretty good. One thing I did notice about this particular rock is, man, it was shedding a lot of little tiny flakes, so it's a really good reason, guys, to be wearing your safety goggles. Got to protect those eyes. These little pieces can go flying everywhere. You can see how some of it chipped off there. Hmm. So I'm going to let this thing dry right now, and then we're going to get ready to put a dopping stick on. So now all we got to do is attach this here agate to this here dowel. And to do that, I'm going to use a dopping station, and I'll show you how I go about doing that. And to do this, it's really simple. I got here my dopping station. That uh, weird looking green stuff is a bunch of wax, and it's hot, so it's melted. And that's going to be what sticks this agate right over here to this dowel and you can see I've got a little bit of residue from a prior usage already on there. So I'm going to show you guys a little trick on how I go about using the dopping station. So again, this is going to be the top side and that's going to be the bottom side. I'm going to take the bottom side, I'm just going to rest it right on here. I'm going to warm my agate up just a little bit. That's going to make the adhesion process a lot more simple. And you can tell I've got this wax nice and beautifully melted. A little bit goes a long ways. You only need a little bit. Just keep steering it around a little bit while I let my rock warm up. That should be good enough though. Oh yeah, that's nice and hot. Sometimes it helps to use some gloves because this wax is hot, but I forgot to put that on. And that's all there is to it. We'll just let that cool down and it'll become rock hard and we can rock on again, guys. Well, with our dopping stick added onto our agate, we're ready to move on to the next step. All right, and for this next step, I'm gonna divide it up into two sections. What we're gonna do is we're gonna have this, we'll call that our short axis. We rotate it this way where we got the long side of the rock and we're going to call that our long axis. We're going to start with the long axis first because I think that's the, always the easiest. If we take a look at it from the side angle here, you're going to see what we're about to do. So we're going to pretend my finger is actually the diamond plated disc and we're going to set that rock right there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rock it the long axis back and forth until we start to develop some kind of a dome. So I got my water running again. I got my safety goggles back on. And again, we're just gonna take that long axis and just keep going back and forth with it. Just real gentle though. And you can see how we're starting to develop a rounded dome there. That is looking pretty good. Very important though, as you can see on the tip here, I went a little bit too far. You kind of want to leave about, eh, about two millimeters. It's always good to work with. So I'm going to add a little bit of meat back to this just by gently rubbing it over here. There we go, that's looking good. As you can see, this is, oh, this pattern is looking beautiful, guys. I think we may have selected the correct side on this. Uh-oh. Uh 
That is not as oval anymore, so I want to make sure I get that back, though. So now with this, I'm going to take the short axis, and I'm going to start to rock it just the opposite direction, so it'll be back and forth this way. That was really quick. Oh, I got a little bit of a high spot I can knock out there. Now, one thing I did notice while I'm working on this though, guys, is I've got this crystalline material right here that is really brittle. Yeah, when I mentioned earlier, wearing the safety goggles, how stuff was flying off everywhere, that would be the culprit right there. This is not uh, chalcedony right there. It's actually crystal, so it's a little bit more brittle. You see I've got some spots flaking off. And the more it uh, deteriorates, the smaller this thing's actually been getting. So I gotta be a little bit careful with that. We've got four corners though now that we need to knock out. And this is gonna be real easy. At least I hope it will be. Because one of the corners is right here on this crystal material. And uh, yep, that could be some bad news. Or it could be some good times, but we're about to find out. So let's go see what happens. For this step, I'm gonna keep rotating it around just so I can get those corners knocked off. So remember, just keep that rock rocking it around. Rock it all around. That is looking pretty beautiful. Even with all the complications we've already encountered, guys. Let's move on to the next step. So I'm gonna swap out with the 80 grit diamond disc now. So we've got here the 180 grit diamond disc installed. We're ready to roll again. Make sure we got that water coming out. For this step, we're just gonna very gently let it glide. I wanna make sure we get a nice smoothness all around, knock out all those imperfections. This is a step I always suggest to take your time. The longer you spend on here, the easier the rest of this is going to be. So let's get this started. Contact. And again, just keep that rock moving all around. That's looking pretty good. It's nice and smooth now. But, uh, possibly a little bit of a sharp edge on this. That's good. Now you can see right on the bottom here where this crystal part is just so brittle. It just keeps flaking off as we go. I'll have to bevel that edge out and hope it doesn't shatter at the very end, but we'll worry about that later. Yeah, I think we're ready for the next step. And that's definitely an important thing to be paying attention to when you first start out with working rocks is the hardness of it. That crystalline material is definitely a lot softer, way more brittle than the agate itself is. 
So this could be interesting to see what the final results are going to be as we progress. We've only got a few more steps, but we've also lost quite a bit of material thanks to that brittleness. Get that lined up and just tighten this down. So now we're on the brown disc. It's kind of a fabric pad. We're done with the diamonds for now. Make sure we got some water. I like to add a little bit more water just to, until it gets soaked in. Just gonna really sponge it up. And this should be pretty quick, this step. If you spent a lot of time on the 180 grit, this will make short work of it in no time. a little bit not wet enough we'll just yeah, there we go beautiful all right let's get started just keep that rock rocking around that's always the key That is looking really good. It's nice and smooth. It's always hard to tell when you're wearing the gloves, but it is definitely nice and smooth. I don't feel any bumps or any imperfections. I think we're ready to move on to the blue disc now. Let's get that installed. So now that we've got the blue disc installed, which is actually the pre-polishing disc, it's going to make this really pop that shine on this agate. Make sure we got plenty of water. Let that soak in for just a little bit. And real important, definitely want to make sure that rock is just rocking all around. You don't want to accidentally start to create some new grooves. That's going to take out that nice, beautiful shine. You don't want to keep it rocking back and forth or any direction for a very long time. Just keep it random, all different directions. Give those wrists a real good workout. That is looking really beautiful. You can definitely tell that was crystalline material here because look how it's almost translucent enough to see the green dopping wax underneath. Oh, that is beautiful. Mm. We're ready to move on to the final polishing stage. So as you guys could probably tell, those last three steps lasted pretty quick. We spent about maybe two, three minutes at the most, probably three in the brown step. They go really quick. This last step where we're gonna use the aluminum oxide polishing powder is gonna go even quicker, probably 30 seconds at the most. So let's finish this beautiful fire agate off by giving it a nice, beautiful polish. So what I really like to do for this step is have some distilled water on standby. What I'm gonna do is spritz a little bit on this pad and I'm gonna rub it in 
It's already been pre-laced with some aluminum oxide powder, so I don't need to do that. And then we'll be ready to go. And to do that, I'm gonna take my squirt bottle right here that's got uh, a lot of dirty clay over it and hope none of that gets on the pad because I don't wanna contaminate that. And we'll just give it a few sprints of distilled water. Assuming my squirt bottle wanted to cooperate with me there. And we'll just kind of rub this into the pad just a little bit. I don't want it to be completely soaking wet. I definitely needed some more water than that. There we go. Yeah, I like that. And by the time it's dried out completely, your rock should, in theory, be completed. So again, we've got this nice, beautiful polish so far, the pre-polish, I mean. Now it's time to give it its final, beautiful polish. Mmm, can't wait. Just keep this guy rocking back and forth, very light. Again, as that pad starts to dry out, you'll feel it really start to grip the felt pad. If it dries out too fast, if it dries out too fast, you can always add a little bit extra water. Just keep it rocking around very gently. Almost let it glide across that felt pad. Mm. Nice and relaxing. Oh boy. And there we go. Oh my goodness. That is just beautiful. <laughs> wow. Wow, that is just beautiful. All we gotta do now is pop off the dopping stick and address some of those fractures on the bottom side. All right, and this step has me a little bit nervous because of that brittleness. All we're gonna do is hopefully... <laughs> Thank goodness our agate is still intact. Whew, that one had me worried. And we'll put our water reservoir back on because we're gonna be needing that again. I don't wanna be breathing in any of that rock dust. For this step, I've installed 180 grit diamond disc back on. Normally I use 80 grit, but since this agate is so brittle in that one specific area, I'm going to be a little bit more delicate. So we're going to spend a little bit of time just creating a beveled edge around the corner here. And you can see where it started to just fracture a little bit right there. We'll get that addressed. Don't want to ruin this beautiful fire agate. Oh man, this is, this is lovely. And for this step, I'm just going to gently, very gently bevel those edges. Very delicately. If you're wearing gloves, this step's probably going to tear those gloves apart. And if you're not wearing gloves, you're probably going to get one crazy manicure. So be careful here, especially when working with a small specimen like this one. Oh, this is just beautiful, guys. I don't know about you, but boy, I love this one. This is awesome. And there you guys have it. How to polish up a beautiful fire agate. That was a little bit stubborn, though. I hope you guys learned something from this. It's always neat to encounter a little bit of troubleshooting on your rocks. Just to overcome those obstacles and just have a lot of fun just polishing them and shaping them. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I sure love it. I really hope you learned something from this video. If you did, please be sure to consider hitting that subscribe button and helping this channel grow. I really appreciate all the support you guys have given me. So definitely leave a comment below if you'd like to see something else, something new, or got some suggestions, or just want to leave a comment in general. All right, my friends, thanks so much for watching. Till next time.